We kick off the news at the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. The rand lost more than 0.5% within minutes of President Jacob Zuma's announcement of a surprise cabinet reshuffle. Now, the biggest move is that of energy. Mamoloko Kubai has been moved from the energy portfolio to communications with David Mashlobo, now occupying the position of Minister of Energy. For more on the cabinet reshuffle, we cross to our reporter, Nompo Siziba, who's standing by with the economist of Alexander Forbes, Lesiba Motata. Over to you, Nompo. Thanks very much, Koshni. Um, let me get straight into it with Lesiba. Thanks very much for joining us, sir. Hi. <laughs> So what do you make of this cabinet reshuffle? And it's interesting to see that uh, NDZ doesn't feature. Well, it is. It is quite interesting. Um, one wonders why it has happened. The market has been wondering that. Uh, but I looked at the RAND's response to it. It's weaker from this morning, but it's not as weak as it has been most of, the, most of last week. Because the big, the big news remains on will they be the electoral the electoral uh, conference take place? Will there be change there? That which happens in the interim, it raises heads. It's really quite a surprise. We didn't expect this to be happening. One wonders what the wisdom has been, but the eye is still on the December outcome. Mm. How will that impact? Because that's where most of the market is looking at. Indeed. Now, Bladen Zimande, he's been axed, um, and uh, we've got uh, Dr. Thingyway Mkize taking over as the head of higher education. Does this signal the end of the alliance with the ANC? I wonder, it, it has not gone popular, even from the ANC survey it came and said they were disappointed with the decision. It, it in itself suggests there hasn't been much consultation. Uh, so one wonders if that, 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 that challenged uh, alliance is going to, to withstand the, state, the test of time. One wonders if it will. But again, again, there's still a lot to go. There's still the December outcome. There's the broader leadership of, of the ruling party that will need to opine and have contributions to this. I think the December still remains a point where we'll have all answers put out. Indeed, it remains a contested outcome. It does show that there are some factions at work. Uh, it will come to a head in December. Mm. And then in terms of... Um in terms of the alignment, the new um, cabinet ministers, do you think that this new alignment now ensures that we're going to begin to see nuclear deals come to fruition? Well, so, so I took note from what the Minister of Finance said in Washington, D.C., at the World Bank IMF Annual Summit. And in there, he was very deliberate in the messages that he put out which included the following, that he will remain on a fiscal prudence. He will also exclude any consideration of a nuclear at this stage because we cannot afford it. I took heart in hearing that. I think he writes the check. He's a finance minister. Uh, and that, that is quite comforting to hear. Will this reshuffle talk to that? I'm not too sure. Is nuclear part of a strategy to augment uh, the supply of energy in the country? Yes, it is. But one will be surprised if now this comes two weeks later. In fact, it's next week, Wednesday, when we get the medium-term budget policy statement. In there, if it begins to show a change from what was already discussed at the Washington uh, uh, World Bank IMF Summit, it'll be quite, it could be quite peculiar. So I took heart from what has happened two days ago from what Washington. You take heart from that, but also there's a documentation or evidence to suggest that we actually don't need any more um, energy or building of plants until about 2037. So would it be prudent in any event to invest further in nuclear? I mean, just looking at it from a clinical perspective, never mind all the motivations. It would not make sense. Um, it's not cost effective. And we need to be answering, does it contribute to lifting up SA structurally higher in terms of economic growth. Yeah, we need electricity supply that is not intermittent, that is consistently supplied. And there it looks like there's some contribution that has come with already the, the, the work that has been done from ESCOM. There's now a new supply of energy that's in the grid. So that's a good thing. But it will be under strain when we grow further. I think it will be a good problem to have. Stronger GDP, demand of electricity, that will be a good problem to have. But at this stage, it will really not make sense. 
especially from the messaging that has arrived. We take, we take every word that comes from authorities to heart because we formulate expectations of what could happen going forward. When the messaging has been clear that it is not affordable at this point in time, There's, there isn't an immediate need right now to actually supply energy aggressively. Mm -hmm. It will be very surpri surprising for that to happen. But a lot of this are now still in the interim, so to speak, because there's still new authorities that need to define it all. They need to tell us where we're going and how this will play out. What is being cooked up now, I don't know. I don't know what the wisdom is, and one wonders if it will be sustained into the new leadership mm, that okay. will stand the, the test of it. time. We're going to leave it there. Thank you very mm. much, uh, Lisiba. Lisiba saying we don't know what's cooking, uh, but let's keep our eye on what happens in December. Markets not really reacted in a very aggressive way. That, that is, the RAND did get weaker slightly, but not massively after the Cabinet announcement um, mid-morning. So it's back to you, Kashni.